Intracorporate transferees from India did not surge over the last five years, according to new data revealed by Singapore's manpower minister, Tan Si Leng. He was debating a motion filed by the Progress Singapore Party on foreign talent policy in the country. The minister provided more data uh, to dispel what the PSP claims to be widespread displacement of locals by foreigners because of free trade deals like the one with India. The total number of ICTs in 2020 was 4,200. This is overall. In, addition, uh, in 2019, it was 4,400. In 2018, 3,200. In 2017, 2,600. And in 2016, 2,100. Now, the total number of Indian ICTs in 2020 was 500. In 2019, 600. In 2018, 400. In 2017, 400. And in 2016, 300. These numbers have been consistently low. Dr Tan also gave data to show that even when the foreign PMETs increased, there was an even larger increase in local PMET employment. There was also low local PMET unemployment and more jobs and wages for locals. Dr Tan took issue with the PSP's focus on certain FTAs and nationalities, saying it comes across as xenophobic and racist. But he says this isn't a solution and will not make Singaporeans feel any more secure, especially the more mature PMETs or those self-employed. Instead, the country must still stay open. I speak to many businesses, trade associations and chambers. A common thread in their feedback is the difficulty of finding enough locals with the right skills. And this has hampered their expansion plans. Some of them are giving up and turning to hiring foreigners based in their home country. After all, people can now work from anywhere. The 10 biggest MNCs in Singapore alone create around 30,000 local PMAT jobs. If they decide to leave, we would not be talking about recouping tens of thousands of jobs, but about losing more of them instead. Dr Tan also says the PSP's suggested cap on workers from a single nationality could mean fewer high-end jobs for locals. That's because good companies with many foreigners would be turned away. He also says the qualifying salaries cited by the PSP for EP and S-pass holders are already in place for the youngest workers. Does he know that our qualifying salaries rise with age to maintain a level playing field for our mature PMATs? For example, the EP qualifying salary for those in their 40s is around double of the minimum qualifying salary. Many businesses, including the SMEs, are already crying out that they are not able to access the foreign PMATs that they need. We listen to them, we engage them, we help them to transform, and we help them to find suitable Singaporeans. But ultimately, we explain to them why we have to hold the line.